I can. Oh no, he's broken it. Oh. <laughs> we're talking metaverse right now. Ben, stop trying to shoot me. I'm trying to do a podcast. Um, I bought two Oculus Quests because I thought, I was sitting there thinking to myself, there's all this talk of metaverse and NFTs. It's like talking about having a TikTok strategy without, Ben, what are you doing? Did, that, did it look good? No, it doesn't look <laughs> good. I'm trying to do something for the viewers that are going to care on your YouTube and you're trying to do the robot. This is what it's actually like to work with Ben. Noel and I have got these sort of Oculus uh, VR headsets. So we were going to record a podcast this week anyway, and we thought, why not do it in the metaverse? So we're going to try a little bit of a weird thing. And we listen, we're just messing around here. We want to see how it is. And we're just sort of exploring this new tech. So we're going to have a little bit of a conversation in the metaverse, a little bit of a conversation out of the metaverse, about the metaverse, and I guess just see where the conversation takes us. So let's step in to this, uh, this new world. And do you know what else, James? The cool thing about the metaverse is when you're in it, you look really cool in the real world, as you can see. This is perfect. The first ever podcast in the metaverse. I don't really know what to do. Well, I'll tell you what, the, um, the LinkedIn post got a few... Well, you just posted the LinkedIn, right? Just thinking, this is cool. But there was quite a few people that got a bit... Um, I almost agitated at the thought of <laughs> this, yeah. this happening. So, uh, OK, so... The, the, for, I think for everybody out there, I'm going to ruin the mystique of the uh, the, the Gymshark innovation, right? That we, we, you and me, were sort of responsible for. I bought two Oculus Quests because everybody's talking metaverse right now. Ben, stop trying to shoot me. I'm trying to do a podcast. Um, I bought two Oculus Quests because I thought I was sitting there thinking to myself, "There's all this talk of metaverse and NFTs. It's like talking about having a TikTok strategy without Ben. What are you doing? Did that? Did it look good? Yeah. No, it doesn't look good. <laughs> I'm trying to do something for the viewers that are going to care on your YouTube, and you're trying to do the robot. So like, comment and subscribe if you want to see more of that, everybody. So for everybody else out there in the, in the world, this is what it's actually like to work with Ben. Did, what does that say? Ben is in the metaverse. Yeah, and then little S and... and then yes. Congratulations, anyway, come on. really good work. Okay, back to the story. Thinking about the metaverse, thought we'd better hang out in there. Bought two Oculus Quest, slung one at Ben, and then called him the next night and said, let's have a meeting in the metaverse because I found this app that can do it. So it was about 10 o'clock at night or something like that. I was sat mm -hmm. at my kitchen desk. You were sitting wherever you were at your desk. We joined, I screen recorded it, and then we did, We only spent about 10 minutes on there hanging out, didn't we? Just like messing around, doing stuff, yeah. like drawing, drawing I mean, the S. Yeah. And then, um, and then I literally chopped it together myself on Final Cut, threw it up on LinkedIn the next day, and the LinkedIn just went absolutely ridiculous, like everybody talking about it. But yeah, like you said, there's either, there's like a split opinion on this, isn't there? Some people are like, sort of probably like us, like, wow, this is the future. And then there's some comments on there which are like... <laughs> No hard pass from me, thanks. I'd rather see my family in real life. And it's almost like, yeah, listen, we, we weren't saying that you don't have to see anybody in real life ever again. This is just, you know, an interesting sort of evolution of meeting people on the internet or whatever. And it is different. I mean, I'm sure, listen, when you're on Zoom, you're speaking to real people. So it is different, isn't it? But you can imagine what this will be like when it can get to that, like, level. If you can get to almost photorealistic graphics in this world, oh, you wild. would have a struggle to tell whether you're almost in this world or the real world at times. The big missing thing I feel like I'm noticing now, I've been in this a few times, is facial expressions because yeah. people's words and their voice is only like, what, 50% of their communications, it's everything else. Mm. So when they can nail that, I think this can really come, really come on. But I, I was also thinking like, you, we didn't do away with the radio when TV was invented, right? So I feel like there's still a place for Zoom and there's still a place for in real life meetings and everything else. This is just another option now. Do you know what I mean? When you do want that slightly more immersive thing. You, you and me are basically now looking at the first ever TV or the first ever camera. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So imagine what this is going to go on to become. The mannerisms and even like the fact that I can like point to you and I can turn here and I can talk to the person that sat in this chair and do all this. That's on another level. Uh, and it feels far more immersive, doesn't it? However, I've got no idea. You could be happy, sad, angry, and I, I wouldn't really be able to tell other than your voice. Um, it's, yeah, that's probably just not quite as, um, you don't oh, yeah. get the same feedback in that sense that you do on Zoom. But when we had our laptops on here and you can see your um, keyboard here and it's actually your mm -hmm. laptop keyboard because you've specified which laptop it is and then you can see your screen here. Yeah, yeah. It's that weird mix of you're in the metaverse but you can also see what's going on in the real world and because you're pressing the keys that actually exist as well so you can feel those keys and see your virtual hands touching them. It is a weird feeling, isn't it? 
Yeah, hundred percent. And then the crazy thing is, so for those who don't know, you can see my hands. Um, that screen there, one of our colleagues could join on a normal laptop and a normal webcam, and they join on that screen oh, just like the same way they, as if they zoomed into a, as if they zoomed into a normal meeting room that me and Ben were sitting in, and they see us yeah. sat here at the desk. And then equally, the whiteboard there, as you can see, Ben's done a wonderful job of the Gymshark logo and the old high school S. Did people? In, I wonder if the people in the USA did the S when they were in school. I've got no idea. Well, we'll find out, won't we, soon? We will, yeah. Comment below if you did the S when you were in school in, in, uh, in these states. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? I'll just, I'll just reach for something in the metaverse, but yeah. knocked over my monster can in the real verse. Well, you should have cleared your desk like it tells you to, shouldn't you? <laughs> yeah, he's hit his monster can. What do you think of my, my piece of art? The first metaverse podcast, that is now in history forever, that. Ben Francis, no Mac, and a, a, get, is that the Gymshark logo? And then, yeah, that's the Gymshark logo. Then all of this is just the old stuff. That's just a bit of fluff at that the was, moment. That was some, that. some of your early work. Q&A, Gymshark, yeah. <laughs> that's probably more valuable, Ben, based on that being some of your earlier work, you know? Yeah, I'll make, I'll make that into an F NFT. <laughs> I've seen worse. <laughs> what impact do we see the metaverse having on e-commerce in the next five to 10 years? Well, this is right at the start, so I've got no idea. Um, I don't know. I feel like it would be cool if I could wear Gymshark in the metaverse. I'm a bit miffed. This is probably the first time I haven't worn Gymshark in a long time because I am, I am a, like a, I don't know, like a virtual character. But that would be cool, wouldn't it? Yeah, it would. And I think a lot of people are talking about it, right? I know a lot of people in our generation, right, who go out and buy a hoodie or some trainers or whatever else it might be, not really because they want to own that thing, but because they're going to take a photograph in it and post it on their Instagram. So that yeah. is like a 2D version of what we're talking about here, right? So I think this is why I think Balenciaga are off to a great start with it. Balenciaga is a very drippy, show off your fashion style brand. So imagine in the future where you do most of your socializing like this, then actually a real Balenciaga hoodie isn't much used to you, but a metaverse Balenciaga hoodie that you can flex on with your friends in the metaverse. Like, so I think we're already sort of heading that way, do you know what I mean? And when people are on, on, on the LinkedIn post saying to you and me, oh, why would you want to stare at an avatar? It was like also saying, well, why would you want to look at someone's Instagram page? That's yeah, still just an online, page. exactly, an online curated version of a person and then you meet the real person, you know, another time. This is the, just the next step in that, I think, so, yeah. The one thing I would say, I can never sit still and I like to be doing things all the time. If I had to sit in the metaverse, as much as I would love it, I would want to move. Like, I feel like this would make my time at the gym even more important. Because even now, I'm like running around an office all day, up and down the stairs, going and chatting to people, then going to refuel for food and all that. Even the commute to and from work. If I was to come downstairs, go into my office, and even though it feels like I'm moving between spaces, but I'm yeah. not, I would get, I would have the need to move at the end of the day a lot. I think you'd end up going like hard left, hard right. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So like hard left for your work, which is sitting with these goggles on, talking to people like this. And then hard right would be like, right, I'm going to go out and run a marathon now because I'm so like, I'm like a caged bird almost. Do you know what I mean? So. Yeah. I remember you and me having a conversation early on to be like, whoever owns the metaverse first, do you know what I mean? Whoever has the most dominant metaverse is the is the player. Do you know what I mean? When you yeah. think Ask Jeeves, Yahoo, and then what happened with Google. Do you know what I mean? Whoever... Yeah creates not a metaverse but the metaverse is going to be the one that runs away with it well i found out that these are subsidized by by meta facebook uh, um, so they're, they're making them cheap on purpose e exactly so i don't know i don't know about a loss maybe they're breaking even i'm not sure because obviously once you're in the oculus then you're straight into the meta metaverse do you know what i mean rather yeah. than going and getting equipped for somebody else's so that makes loads of sense so this for me feels like a really early land grab slash uh, like trying to get that first mover advantage quickly and i think mm. it's working as well too right Everyone, Ben's doing his Doctor Strange impression to me. It's like a Dragon Ball Z Kamehameha. Oh, sorry, I got confused. <laughs> um, I'll make sure I don't make that mistake again. Like Imagine just, getting fired by an avatar. Let's like, see, that'd be sad, wouldn't it? Do you just this, <laughs> we, did say this is one for, we did say this is one for firsts. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I need to do some more firsts. So we've done the first Gymshark logo, it was the first podcast. Yes. I want to do, do the first do robot, which I've done. We've done the robot, good work, <laughs> mate. Yeah, great. First Dragon Ball Z Kamehameha. So yeah, we need some more Metaverse first. The Meta Firsts. Meta Firsts. As the Chief Brand Officer, I feel like it was only right that I branded this little segment. Number one, what was our first one that we did? I've done loads of It was stuff. the S. It was the, the S. first S. The Gymshark logo, signature. I suppose this podcast, right? The podcast, the first ever podcast. We should make a t-shirt that says the Meta Firsts on it. Does that mean we are the Meta Firsts? Yeah, like a band. 
<laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we are Ben Francis and the Meta Firsts. <laughs> Do we have any more Meta Firsts? I think the robot. No, we're not counting the robot. Can we high five? Hold on. Oh, no, I can't no. even see my hands for some reason. I think it's no, because you've got a hand, so you can't yeah, do yeah, both. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, that didn't work. Basically, we've come up with you can do the S and a, and a terrible podcast that nobody well, wants to have, watch because it's so scatty. Someone will watch this. As long as, as long as one person watches this podcast, then we are the first podcasters in the metaverse. By the way, does, I that can mean, actually... does that mean we'll have as many followers as Joe Rogan? I think it does, yeah. I think that's how it works. What do they call it? First mover advantage? Yeah. <laughs> First movers stick our little flag in the ground. There you go. You and me are the Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin of the metaverse. What is it? One small step for, for man, one great step for mankind. Yeah, I think pretty sure that's it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? The first ever Noughts and Crosses winner in the metaverse. We've got our flag in the ground. We've done the podcast, we've done the noughts and crosses. That's it, ladies and gentlemen. The first ever podcast in the metaverse. And now we're gonna wander over to the podcast studio and finish this off in the real world. Mate, this is so realistic. It's like you're sat right opposite me. It's amazing, isn't it? Yeah, man. <laughs> so here we are back in the real world now. Um, and we're gonna probably just spend a little bit more time talking about the metaverse and um, our thoughts and experiences in it so far. If it, it became like a word to me, like metaverse, I just thought like, I don't know, it's really weird. We're all talking about it. And it was strange that we hadn't tried it. I, I didn't have a clue what it was. I'd used VR because when we first did this office, we had that little VR section, Oculus didn't we? Rift that and was, it was yeah. but it, I don't know, it didn't really feel, it was all right. We had a few games on it and it wasn't, you could see it was cool, but it wasn't like now it's that, I feel like it's, a, it's got to the tipping point now where the software is good enough for you to really have a view of where it's going to go. Yeah, that felt that that felt for me back then like a glorified Nintendo Wii. Yeah, and I kind of thought that was what it was still going to be like. But these things are just next level, and the fact you can buy people on LinkedIn were saying like, "Oh, you've got you have to buy thousands of pounds worth of hardware for that." And it was like, "No, three hundred quid, and you don't even have to use those bits. It's literally just this." Yeah, and I thought you'd have to be plugging it into all sorts of things. Everybody asked that, don't they? Charge it on the USB C and just run with it. It's great. Everybody who's asked us about it in the office has been like, "What do I tether it to? Is it my PS Five? Is it my Xbox?" And you're like, "No, it's literally." Everything's in that, which is pretty wild. Yeah, it's great. <clears throat> and then, for, I, I mean, if you fast forward, if they, well, when the graphics improve, and I mean, I'm sure there's plenty more things that they can do with it as well, you can really see how it'll become. I mean, it's an immersive experience anyway, but it'll be on another level. Mm. Um, I was thinking, when it gets to like the incredible level of realism, have you seen those tests that they do where you think it's your leg and they knock on your leg and they're not actually knocking on your leg, they're knocking on a fake leg and you can feel it? It makes me wonder if you can get to that in the metaverse. That would be a bit be so weird, wouldn't weird, it? Wouldn't it? And the, the, I read that they've taken out some sort of patent or that they designed some sort of band that goes around your wrists mm. so that none of this is necessary because it'll, it'll, they'll pick up like electronic signals to your hands to be able to see what your hands are doing in like real time. It's wild. Our kids it? are going to say it's mental that you played games on TVs That's and real. like big screens. And I mean, remember the big tellies that we had were like the curved screen, they would go back like two feet. Now, like, well, when we have kids, our kids will literally be gaming in the metaverse for, well, their lives, right? Yeah, yeah they'll be struggling to differentiate between, oh, you lot went outside to play football. Yeah. Well, we just do it standing in the living room. But what's interesting for me was on LinkedIn, the way it divided opinion as well. You had people going, I think I had a thousand people share it like, wow, this is unbelievable. But I had just as many people being like, not for me, never doing this. Do you know what I mean? Which is interesting. I get it. But it's not like, we're not saying we are now going to leave this real world and go and live in the metaverse. It's just something that you just sort of use when it makes sense. I can see for gaming, it's going to advance rapidly. Yeah, why? Wow. Even for, for, for our meetings, like cause the first thing that we think is we've got offices obviously in all over the world, Mauritius, Hong Kong, the States, the UK. And you think, is there any way that we can use this to better immerse the offices? At the moment, with workrooms, because it doesn't capture emotion or your face, it doesn't really, I mean, it's cool, but I would probably wouldn't say it's, I would probably still lean on Zoom yeah. for the time being, but you can see it's you're, only, away, yeah, you're yeah. only two or three steps away from this being a truly immersive experience. And I think Gary said this, right? So I'm paraphrasing Gary, but I remember him saying like, when it comes to NFTs, there was a point where people were saying, I'm not putting my credit card details on the internet. You know what yeah. I mean? When we were kids yeah. or, oh no, don't get a webcam or things like that. And they, they were quite distrusting. Do you know what I mean? And now we laugh at our parents for that sort of attitude because, mm. well, e-commerce business, right? But you can just imagine 
those people that are saying now, no, it's invasive, it's whatever else, I can mm. imagine this would just be like par for course, the same way e-commerce is today. Do you know what I mean? The interesting bit is the ownership thing as well. The person who asked the question about how do you think this will change e-commerce, I was reading recently, trying to just trying to understand this whole Web 3.0 thing, the fact that sort of Web 1.0 is just about reading, right? It was just the screen and you just read things and that was it. It's like an online encyclopedia, yeah. Then... Um, then when like the Facebook generation came along, it was like read and write, right? And you're inputting and having conversations and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And now with Web 3.0, we're moving into read, write and own, right? And you're owning things in that metaverse. Yeah, yeah. Like that is wild that you and me would log in there and I might invite you to my living room where I've got a IKEA sofa. A little fire on. Yeah, Jim Shark <laughs> hoodie. And I've paid for those things the same way I would in the real yeah, world. It's it crazy. is crazy. So I obviously absolutely love the metaverse and I can see that is going to be the future. And I think fast forward 10 years, both me and if we have kids at some point, they will be living within it. If if I was in there, it, it's weird because you jump in, in in between these different rooms, right? So it feels like you're moving, but physically I'm I'm not moving. If I was in there all day, by the end of the day, I, I'd feel like a dog that needed a walk. Do you know what I mean? Like I'd have so much energy. I'd be bouncing off the walls. Yeah. I'd like, I mean, the gym's important to me anyway. I work here, we, I mean, we work here every day. I'm running up and down the stairs, walking around, chatting to people, sort of burning calories and using energy. If I was in there and I was more static, the gym would probably be even more important to me then than it is now, I'd say. I, I, I look on my Whoop when we were working from home at my like um, sort of resting metabolic rate, and it was so low compared to just being in the office and, like you say, walking around, going up and down stairs, stuff like that. So it's going to get even worse with this stuff. But yeah. that could potentially pose like an advantage to us in the future, right? Because it might be that people are sort of doing a, you know, a medium amount of activity now, but in the future, if their work is eight hours sitting with one of these on, yeah. like you say, after that, you're going to want to get in the gym, you're being cross fit swimming running whatever it might be you you're gonna have to be more purposeful with your yeah, yeah. active time because you like you say you're not burning those calories just through the day yeah. and yeah. i think that, that loads of people commented on linkedin right being like this is never going to replace real life whatever else you and me are massive advocates of like we had all that time working from home and it's an, it was it was fun at first so I was like, oh this is cool yeah webcam whatever else i think i'd be the first to admit as soon as I could get back into the office desperate to get in yeah sprinted back to the office so we're massive advocates for real life meetings, real people, real faces. But we're like Henry and Senai were supposed to be coming over in two weeks time from yeah. Denver and they can't. This could definitely be a super viable replacement. It's a step yeah. closer than Zoom is. So I don't see it as replacing anything. I almost, I see it as like this path from phone call almost or email then phone call. And so, do you know what I mean? You're getting more and more immersive. Mm -hmm. The final stage of which being sitting opposite each other, reading facial expressions. This just feels like one step before that almost, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. Four pillars of our business, right? Mm. Um, hardware, software, content, and IRL. Mm. The interesting thing that this is, if you try and stick that in one of those, it almost sits in this bridge yeah. between software and IRL. Do you mm. know what I mean? Or hardware and IRL. And I actually think that's quite cool. Do you know what I mean? Mm. But it'd be interesting to see in the future, does that then become a fifth pillar of our, the, the Gymshark yeah, experience? The metaverse and yeah. the Gymshark experience in the metaverse. Because even though, I mean, there's, you could definitely do a hell of a lot of workout classes in there. I wouldn't see you doing like, you know, resistance weights training. and resistance training. But I don't know, yoga, things things that you can conventionally do at home, you could definitely do in, in the metaverse. So I think there's definitely something we can do there. Um, and even the events that we do, like we would pre-COVID do events, thousands of people from around the world would come to them. There's got to be something that you can do there as the software develops. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yoga seems like such an obvious one for me. I haven't really done any of the fitness experiences. I'm only a few days into having this, so I need to. But when you think about how yoga works, you're very stationary in a singular position. This feels like a perfect fit. And for me, that's what like... AR and VR is good for people trying to force everything into the metaverse. Mm. Like you say, I'm never going to do a leg extension with one of these on, yeah. right? I'm just not. But it was like when the amount of people who reached out to me on LinkedIn over the years said, no, we can, you know, we can model a Gymshark t-shirt on the table so people can see what it looks like. And it's mm -hmm. what I want to say to them, no offence, a customer has never asked, I'd love a way to be able to see a Gymshark t-shirt on my table. Yeah. Whereas for IKEA, it's cool. Perfect, because yeah. I've because that is a problem that the customers face, right? I want to be able to see that sofa in my like living room. Literally there, yeah. So they had a customer problem, and VR or AR happened to be a great solution for that. Mm. So it'd be interesting for us to look at like the the wants and needs of our community, the different kinds of training they do, and shopping habits, and whatever else, and say, right, does this can this be a vehicle to solve any of those problems? I remember when they launched the PlayStation Two, and I remember looking at that and thinking like the graphics you would see were like out of this world weren't they whereas you look at it now and it literally just looks i mean it looks terrible compared to this to literally being in a virtual world makes you wonder where it will be in another 10 years right that's crazy crypto, crypto. a few years back 
you and me got obsessed with it. Oh yeah, we got <laughs> yeah, we got obsessed with crypto for a while. Um, and it, I mean, it's still incredibly cool. And I think the technology is amazing, isn't it? I think crypto to me, it does feel like the future. I'm really interested to see how or if or when it's regulated and how governments act because I, I just can't. I, I mean, I'm sure other people will know more than this, more about this than I do. But it feels like the governments will want to regulate it because they want to control their currencies. But the whole thing of being able to like friction in a frictionless way you know, make payments and trades and things like that and do it all online and have my crypto wallet wherever I am. I think that is cool. Um, and even this new NFT world that we're seeing now, I think digital ownership, I think to your point in terms of this new Web 3.0 is amazing. Um, it feels to me a little bit like what I imagine the early internet felt like where you had websites popping up and from what I gather, I think there was like a dot-com boom in 2008, yeah. I think it was. Um, I think we're going to be in a position where the vast majority, I'd imagine, of NFTs are going to fail and probably end up being worthless at some point. There will still be that few, that minority that I'm sure will be worth in incredible value. Um, but for me, the thing that's really interesting is this underlying technology. I think the technology is fascinating and I'm really excited to see where it goes in the next it feels years. like that like phoenix that emerges from the ashes doesn't it yeah. the ashes being the initial wave of crypto hysteria and FOMO yeah. and whatever else but what's the thing that sits under that yeah. and going back to what we said about this like looking at jim shark and saying right of all these new things that come along does this solve any problems for us mm -hmm. one that really stuck out to me was like transparency right we, we harp on about transparency all the time we do as much as we can mm -hmm. the fact that the blockchain is ultimately transparent you can mm -hmm. see everything i don't know what but i can't help but think there's something for us to be done on the blockchain do you know mm -hmm. what i mean uh, i i think that um tax for example here in the uk i don't think people understand that well enough where their money goes and stuff like that mm -hmm. and i remember thinking the other night if somehow i logged into hmrc mm -hmm. saw the money that i paid in tax and then through the blockchain saw that that went to nurses yeah. to the nhs and it went yeah. to the police and to this and i could watch my pounds through the blockchain that's amazing mm -hmm. when addy did their you know people compare us to addy and nike all the time when addy did their big NFT drop, I could see where every single dollar went on the blockchain, right? That's that's revolutionary yeah, stuff, man. And I think, and that's the thing, isn't it, is the difference between the blockchain and maybe NFTs and crypto yeah, specifically. Yeah, yeah. But the blockchain itself is fascinating and it is crazy to think, fast forward 10, 20 years, where will the metaverse and where will the blockchain be and how will it have changed things? I, I still don't think, I don't think we truly appreciate and realise how bigger change it is that we're going through. And when I, when I look back to some of the things that we were really a part of in our youth was like social media and, and sort of networking, social networking online. I, it does make me think at times that that change was massive and fundamental and huge, but I still think the changes that are about to happen in the next 10 years will be even greater than that. I, I think it's amazing how quickly people adopt new forms of things and then mm. how quickly you can feel like a dinosaur. I think it's creepy. I think it's intrusive. I want nothing to do with it. I'm going to go off and live Honestly, in the country. You, I think, <laughs> you, this is like when... I, I think you and me have a very similar approach to stuff like this. Uh, iOS... All the iOS changes came in around... <laughs> I, think, I couldn't be able to get the yeah. number wrong. All the iOS changes came in around <laughs> cookie tracking and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And I remember going in and being like, accept, 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 accept. I wanted, I want all the cookies. I want all the marketers to know everything about me. And I just want to see what they do with that information. Do you know what I mean? Maybe because we work in this world. I remember you saying That's a similar thing. That's experience, right? Yeah, 100%. Because as well, like if I was doing anything dodgy, maybe I wouldn't want that. But mm -hmm. in general, I'm happy for it to all come in. So a little bit like if there was a, if there was a, if there was a queue, which is like a queue up here and you can get the neural link early, I'm fairly sure I would do it. Because like, like Elon would, says. Yeah, that's the problem with me. I'd get... I just, I'd, I wouldn't want to die wondering. Yeah. I want to know what it's yeah, like. Me, yeah, Turn yeah. me into fucking oh. Robocop, oh. Elon. <laughs> <laughs> I'd let you go first, then I'd get it. But yeah, like he said on Rogan, we're already, I already have access to all the world's information right here in my hand. Mm -hmm. And I've got this thing in my hand 24 hours a day, right? Mm -hmm. So all he's doing really is removing this yeah. link and putting it in there. Obviously, there's going to be privacy things to think about and how he handles that and all that kind of stuff. I've got but, nothing to hide, Elon. There go you go. For it. There you go, Elon. If you're listening, <coughs> Ben's got nothing to hide. I'll do the uh, the beta. <laughs> Big clunky <laughs> thing. <I'm Yeah>. sorry. <laughs> like this all the time. No, you're right. Though it will be cool. We're going to get there. It's just a matter of it's. A and matter I'm just of I'm just such a believer in what he does. For me, he's such a catalyst for change. Yeah. His attitude when some I remember somebody saying to him. Um, uh, it, what if what if the big automotive manufacturers beat you to the punch? In other words, Mercedes the VAG group, whatever else, come in with more money than you have and beat you to electric cars. And he said, well, then I still 
hit my purpose, right? Mm -hmm. Which was to get every car on the road electric, whether I do it or whether I like the fire under everybody else that does it. Yeah. And I just think having such a maverick and somebody who's willing to push boundaries like that, challenge like a challenger brand out there lighting fires under people. I, mm -hmm. I absolutely love that. Love it. So that was the first ever podcast in the metaverse. There was a few more meta first in there too. Is there anything else that you want to see us talk about? Have you got any questions? Anything else you want to see us discuss? Uh, comment down below and please don't forget to like and subscribe. If you want to see more of Ben talking like an actual human and less like a robot, comment that below as well. <laughs> hey guys, Noel here. So me and Ben were just talking and we decided that we're going to choose one comment from Instagram, one from LinkedIn and one from YouTube. Um, best comment meaning could be funny, could be really interesting, could be thought provoking, it could be you pitching a business idea. We're going to pick our favourite comment uh, across those platforms. We're going to send you an Oculus headset and you can hang out with us in the metaverse. Do what you want with that meeting with us. You can just talk meta and hang out, high five, do the robot like Ben does, or pitch a business idea, entirely up to you. But we'd love to have some really, really interesting metaverse meetings. So like, comment, subscribe, and let's see those great comments below. Thanks, guys.